Hello and welcome to this edition of Standard Deviation, my column and video series. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor at The Print, and I'm going to be speaking to you about my latest column on how the Modi government has taken a number of trade measures that will benefit India, but the way it has taken them might hurt its Vishwaguru ambitions. The G20 Leaders Summit in New Delhi is nearly upon us and the capital city has swung into action to host the heads of the most powerful nations in the world. This is no doubt a matter of significant prestige for India, which has developed a reputation as a steadfast and reliable global economic power over the years. However, some recent trade-related decisions by the government of India are eroding this trust. The main problem with these decisions isn't so much their substance, but in how they were implemented. That is, they were brought in with a suddenness that has become the hallmark of the Narendra Modi government's management style. Domestically, these sudden changes have been marketed as decisiveness on the part of the Prime Minister and his government, but internationally, they come off as unreliability. Now, from India's point of view, prioritizing the country's interests is a good quality in a Prime Minister. However, any ambitions of becoming a Vishaguru become that much harder to achieve. It's hard to reconcile a global, caring country with decisions it makes that are designed solely to benefit itself, no matter the cost to others. In September 2022, the government effectively banned the export of broken rice, and in July this year, it extended this ban to all non-Basmati white rice. The food ministry said the ban was to contain inflation in food grains, and ensure adequate availability of non-Basmati white rice in the Indian market. The inflation rate for cereals was 13% in July, which pushed food inflation to 10.5%, which in turn led to overall inflation coming in at 7.4% that month, well above the RBI's upper comfort limit of 6%. So it was perhaps only natural that the government would try to do something to ensure greater supplies of rice in the domestic market to cool prices down. Why it did what it did wasn't the problem. It was the how. With an overnight ban on Indian exports, the government suddenly deprived the world of about 40% of the rice available to world markets. When it comes to food, Everybody likes a little warning before an impending supply disruption is done. The notification did include a provision that allowed exports, with the permission of the government, to ensure food security amongst India's trading partners. However, as we all know, government permission takes a while to come. It was only at the end of August 2023, more than a month later, that the government allowed the export of non-Basmati white rice to Singapore, Bhutan and Mauritius, all three of which are heavily dependent on Indian rice. Countries like to strike trade deals that are stable and long-lasting, especially when it has to do with food and fuel. A single incident that shakes this confidence can be hugely damaging in the future. It's highly likely that each of these countries and several others will now revisit their food supply plans to set up contingencies in case India does something drastic again. Apart from supply issues, sudden bans also have a large impact on prices. According to global media reports, India's rice ban led to a surge in global rice prices, which hurts friends and foes alike. A phased ban on rice exports, starting with maybe halving supplies, would have not only helped India maintain its domestic supplies, but would have given trading partners enough time to plan their own supplies. The same goes with wheat, although less so. India is the second largest producer of wheat, but accounts for a minuscule share of the global wheat trade. However, in the months leading up to India's May 2022 wheat export ban, the government had said it had plans to increase its wheat exports fivefold and that the focus would be Asian and African countries. These countries were naturally keen, but the export ban again cast India in a poor light. It's not just India's reputation with sovereigns that gets affected by its hasty decision-making. At stake is also the country's reputation among multinational corporations as a stable economy with regulatory clarity. In early August this year, 
the government again with unsettling suddenness banned the import of laptops, servers, personal computers and other electronics unless the companies doing the importing obtained a particular license from the government. This effectively meant that several companies such as Apple were left high and dry because many of their models are not being assembled within the country at the moment. The government belatedly extended the window in which imports would be allowed until companies managed to get the license. But this only reinforced the feeling of uncertainty amongst the companies. The reasons the government gave for the import restriction had to do with internal security and ensuring trusted supply chains. The actual upshot was that the revamped production-linked incentive scheme for IT hardware saw a surge in demand. Now, an effective PLI scheme would have attracted this kind of demand in any case, as has been the case in so many other sectors. Using trade barriers as a tool to push companies to invest in India, which is effectively choosing the stick over the carrot, isn't likely to go down well with companies looking to invest. Also, it's not as if global companies are lining up to invest in India either. Foreign direct investment fell 16% in 2022-23 compared to their level in the previous year and dropped 34% in the first quarter of 23-24 as compared to the same period of the previous year. Even India's handling of its oil supplies in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine war has called into question its reputation as a country with a high moral ground. Yes, importing lots of relatively cheap Russian oil is good for India, but it also attracts allegations of war profiteering, a distinctly unsavory reputation to have. India has been pretty consistently developing the reputation of being a stable global power for a while now. This can be seen in the big visible things like the 123 nuclear deal with the US, the revocation of the controversial retrospective tax amendment that had been brought in by then Finance Minister Pranam Mukherjee and playing host to an international grouping like the International Solar Alliance and of course now hosting the G20 summit, even if the last one is decided by rotation. India's rising stature can also be seen in the smaller, more invisible things like the multiple free trade agreements we've entered into, the advanced pricing agreements we've signed, the double tax avoidance agreements and the automatic exchange of information agreements that we have been party to. From India's point of view, the decisions taken by the government are nearly all positive, whether in the short term or in the medium term. Other countries do the same kinds of things. But then you also don't hear the likes of Xi, Putin or even Biden vocally aspiring to their equivalent of Vishwaguru status. They do what is best for only their country without pretense or posturing. Let India also unambiguously embrace our self-interest. On that note, that's all from me. Thank you for watching.